And even though I know what's coming, I still get irrationally angry at the stepmother, stepsister characters in these retellings because they're just so awful. Hello. Um, I am here to tell you some thoughts now that I have some thoughts to tell you. Um, very descriptive over here. It's supposed to help. Ow. Book people are different, but like, I mean, like people in books, that's, I'm a book people. I'm a book people. You are a book people. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with a new vlog series. What are these hands? As you can tell by the title of this, we are starting a new vlog series where I try to complete series that I've already started. That is the goal of this series is to get me to finish the things that I have started. Primarily the books that I've only read one thing in, um, but things that like I've started and I really need to finish. So we're doing the very first episode today. So I thought I'd go ahead and start it and tell you guys what it is that I'm reading. So this one is a little funky because I thought I reached the end of the series but we've been announced that there's going to be at least two more in this series but this is a series of standalone and that is the Entangled with Faye series by Tessonia Odette. The first one being The Curse of the Wolf King which I have already read but it's the only one that I've read. So I have three more that I need to read. Now these are all books set in the same world. They're all set around like the Fae and stuff like that and they're all reimaginings of fairy tales. They're new adult as well which is fun. So the first one obviously was Beauty and the Beast. I really enjoyed this one and the rest of these I have audiobooks for on Audible. So we're going to be going in order. Again, these are a series of standalones. So this is going to be like a, a test the waters kind of thing um, with this video. But um, it's going to be easier for me to talk about these because they're all different rather than in the future videos we might do more spoilery thoughts because at that point I would have already read the first one. Either way, the first one is going to be Heart of a Raven Prince and this one is a Cinderella retelling. Um, we have Kiss of the Selkie which obviously is a Little Mermaid retelling and then a Taste of Poison which is a Snow White retelling. And then I think she's announced that she's going to be doing a Sleeping Beauty and a Rapunzel retelling are the next two. I think maybe one of them is going to come out later this year. I'm not sure. But I put specifically this one. I put Heart of the Raven Prince on like three or four different TBRs last year and I thought I was going to get to it and I never did. And these are taking up so much space but I love a good fairy tale. So this is the series that we are going to be diving into in this video. This is the plan. I thought I'd go ahead and start it now because I'm going to pepper these in over the next couple of weeks as far as like what I'm actually going to be reading. But we're going to be starting with Heart of the Raven Prince. So I'll come back to you when I've started this and kind of tell you a little bit more about what it's about. But we have Faye and I'm very excited to finally hopefully <laughs> get into this series that I've been talking about for so long that I just keep collecting the books and not making any progress in. So we are going to change that. Hello. Um, it's been a hot second. It's been a hot second since I um, came and started this video. So I thought I'd come and kind of give you an update. My plan was to get through half of this book and I've gotten through much more than half of this book. Um, but that is because the first like third of this book goes by so quickly and yet not a lot happens. So I was well into this book looking at what I assumed would be the halfway point and I was way past it. Um, so I'm coming to tell you some general thoughts on this before we get to the end which is probably going to happen tomorrow uh, if I'm not if I'm being honest and then I'll start the next book. We follow our main character Ember. I don't have the cover on so this is the beautiful hardback. Very obsessed with it. So we follow our two main characters Franco and Ember. And Ember is half fae, half human. She looks human except for she has blue hair which comes from her mother who was fae. And she has this ability with music and being able to sing and play instruments and that kind of thing that kind of gives 
people almost an otherworldly feel while she's playing. And so this book starts with her and her stepmother and her step sisters, her two stepsisters, basically preparing for this ball. And she has made a bargain. And in this world, there are bargains that physically harm you um, if you don't do them. So basically, after our main character, Ember's father passes away, she makes a bargain with her stepmother. Her stepmother basically takes full advantage of her and agrees to like take care of her if she will not leave them until she turns 19. She's going to inherit her father's money when she turns 19. And basically she has to do everything her stepmother says. And if she doesn't do it, it physically pains her. And I think if she continues to stop doing it, um, eventually it, the bargain kills her. So there's a lot of stuff that she has to do. But this starts with them going to a ball. And I had to double check, but there are hints to the other characters in this series, which I think is fascinating. So like the reason they go to this ball is because Ember became friends with this woman named Gemma, who was the main character in the very first book. And they were in the same court at one point. So they were very friendly and she basically gets them tickets to this ball. We meet Maisie, who is the princess of the Selkie court, who the next book is going to follow. And she kind of starts the plot a little bit with this book. Uh, so they find themselves at this ball. Franca was supposed to be courting Maisie and Maisie runs away, <laughs> but she runs into Ember and they basically create a bargain where Ember is pretending to be Maisie and is only going to be there basically to give Maisie time to get away. Now, we don't know what's happening with Maisie. I think we're going to find that out in the next book, but we don't really know what's going on, but Maisie's trying to run away from something. And so she creates a bargain with Ember, and Ember has to wear these glamoured shoes so that anytime she's wearing them, she looks like Maisie. And then after a while, the prince figures out that, like, Maisie isn't actually Maisie, and agrees and goes along with this ploy because he doesn't want a princess. He doesn't want to get married. He doesn't really have any interest in romance, but he needs to look like he's trying um, for political reasons. So they create this bargain basically to just keep going along with it, letting everyone think that she is Maisie and that they are actually courting and that eventually she will end their courting of sorts. Um, her plan is basically to turn 19, get our inheritance, and go. And so basically where we're at is halfway through is when everything that I've just told you kind of settles in stone. So the romantic plot line of this, because this is a fantasy romance, doesn't really start until near the end. So I didn't notice that I was close to the end until um, like yesterday, I was realizing that I only had like a little bit left in my audiobook and I was like, wait a second, what's going on? And that's how I discovered that we were close to the end. The thing with this book is I'm enjoying it. I'm invested in our characters. I am very interested to see where they're going to go. I like the hints at these other characters. Like I said, I had to double check because the names sounded familiar, especially when Maisie showed up. I was like, wait a second, that's a name that sounds familiar. Also, she's from a Selkie court, and we're going to talk about Selkie. So, like, that's where I connected the two, and that's when I connected the first book as well. So, like, you know, it's it's a series of standalones. You do not have to read any of them that don't sound interesting. You don't have to read them in any kind of order. I am because it. I just think it's fun to read them in the order that they came out. Um, so it's fun to have these hints to people that we know. But like Maisie. I think we're going to learn stuff in the sec in the next book about her, but like she doesn't really play a big, big role in this book. And Gemma basically plays no role at all. So we're really seeing these two characters. What is interesting about this is that the prince has this ability, which I think is fascinating, is he is unseely or seely. I can never tell them apart because like certain people have certain powers. I think he's unseely because he can transform into a raven. He's got these abilities that he can transform partially. So like that's why as you can see here he can just like create wings. Like he can still have a human humanoid body but like he'll have wings um, because he has the ability to kind of like transform partially but he also can transform fully into a raven. So you have that but he also is, I can't remember exactly what they call it. They call him a vampire basically. So he and his sister, who is currently the queen, um, can tell people's emotions. And so 
He's never given himself really, he's never really been in a, in a serious relationship besides once because he can tell that people usually only want him for his crown. And so he'll be like, oh, there are feelings here. And then after a while, he gets used to the way that someone, someone's emotion feels and he can tell what their true feelings and motivations and stuff are. So he is that sort of vampire in a, like, it's not a vampire, but he calls himself that. Um, because he does like siphon other people's emotions. It's like when they're really scared, really happy, mostly it's fear. Um, he'll like feed off of those emotions, but I don't really know what that does to him. Cause like we've only seen it once, but it's never really explained. So there's a lot about his character that's fascinating to me, but there's not a lot explained yet. So I'm wondering if we're going to learn a little bit more. Um, or if we're just, this is it, this is what we're getting. So these are very fun stories. They're very surface level almost. I mean, you do get more because we do have him and he's starting to like thaw and she's starting to thaw towards him and they're starting to have all the feelings towards each other. And he's just been this very like playboy style um, prince. But of course, there's a lot more to him than that. And his reputation was not necessarily true when it was given to him so it was like all of that kind of stuff so it's all of your stereotypical what you would expect in a situation like this but I'm still really enjoying it I, st I think this will probably be a four star I don't I don't expect it to get to a five star funny things that I'm noticing about this is I love a good fairy tale romance I love a good retelling um and I do love a real a good Cinderella retelling and I'm always regardless of what the retelling is because you know how it's going to start it's going to start with Cinderella the Cinderella character and the stepsisters or a mother character being absolutely terrible to them and even though I know what's coming I still get irrationally angry at the stepmother stepsister characters in these retellings because they're just so awful to our main characters so I just cannot wait until she basically leases a giant F U to her stepmother and I'm very interested to see where that's going to go and there's just other political stuff going on as well so I'm definitely enjoying it I suspect that it will uh wrap up very very quickly that's kind of what if I remember the first book it wrapped up within like the last couple of chapters so I s expect that this one will be the same it's a lot of like building up this relationship and then once we've built it it's like smooth sailing smooth sailing till the end so I'm interested to see where we're gonna go um those are my thoughts so far so I'll let you know once I've finished this and I probably will have started Kiss the Selkie um next because I am very interested on this Maisie character because like the way that she leaves this story is she is like almost fearful of something from her court. So I don't know what that's going to be. I have, I have suspicions based on what I know the next book's about, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I am definitely interested and I'm glad that I'm finally reading these because I do love them. They're, you don't need a lot of like brain power to get through them. So they're really, really easy to get through. Um, and they're just, they're just fun. You know, they're just fun. So yes, enjoying this one so far for sure. The sun decided to come out and be weird on my face. So thank you, sun. Hello. It has been a couple of days, but I have some updates for you. I have finished Heart of the Raven Prince. I did actually finish it the day after I talked to you guys last. Um, I ended up giving it four stars. I did very much enjoy it. It had a lot of really cute moments. As you can see, I tabbed a lot near the end. I don't like that you just decided to come in here and watch me update. That's a little bizarre. So this was cute. It had a lot of really sweet moments near the end. I feel like an issue I'm going to see throughout the next, like the next couple of books in the series is going to be the fastness of how quickly people fall in love. Um, not necessarily how quickly they fall in love, but how quickly they express it. Because I, I just feel like people in books jump really, really quickly into love and realistically at least for me it was I'm gonna sit and I know how I feel but I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna think about it before I ever say it and they just kind uh -huh. of say it <laughs> Chris could attest to this but like they just like 
you're not because you're in in this book you're both in both of their heads you back go back and forth and they don't even think oh i love this person it was just like all of a sudden they said it and i was like excuse me you're gonna have those conversations in your head before you ever say them out loud so that part was very unrealistic and but at the same time like it was really cute so i'm afraid for what this video is going to actually end up being because these books are really sweet and they're fun to jump into, but these are palate cleanser books. These are books that I want to read between things. These are not going to be books that I want to read back to back to back, which is kind of what I'm doing. And so I'm just like really afraid of how it's going to go because like I think a series of standalones is a great idea, but like these are not books that you binge. These are books that you kind of like read sparingly between other things, whereas there are other series out there where like one book plays into the other kind of thing. I'm like, yes, the, some of the stuff in here sets up the next book. It, you don't need this book to have that book make sense. Um, so there's just some things that I feel like is going to be tougher to talk about with this series. And I'm afraid I'm going to not want to read it because like I, I currently am, have started Kiss of the Selkie, which is the next one. I am 112 ish pages throughout this book so like 15 20 percent maybe and I haven't picked this book up in two days so because I'm just like I don't know there's like something that like I'm interested in it but the fact that I'm reading it for something is making me not want to read it so like I'm having this issue where I want to keep reading the series because I am invested in these characters and I do like that it's kind of like a new story every time but it's set in the same world and one thing that I found which is really interesting is I have this series and then I have a bind up of the Faye Isle trilogy by this author which is set in the same world but that one is set way before this one so like they keep mentioning like this big war within this book and i'm thinking that that series is going to be the one that kind of like sets it up all of a sudden the sun is out as you can see oh my goodness what happened here pause we're just gonna move because that just i can't deal with trying to figure out lighting right now so i have basically i've come to you to tell you that i finished this book i gave it four stars i did really enjoy it it has a lot of those like fun cheesy like i loved seeing our characters fall for each other but it took half of the book for them to even really kind of get in the situations that would make them fall for each other whereas this one um we are just now about to jump into situations where like these characters are really going to start meeting for the first time i mean they have met but there's just some stuff that i feel like is going to be an issue although with this one i will say already there's been a big bomb that's been dropped and I was not prepared for it. So with this book specifically, we follow our main character, Maisie, who is the princess in the one of the sea, actually like the sea court. And her father has kind of like, he's the king and he's kind of like let her run away because there's this big bad witch who, this is supposed to be based on Little Mermaid, so I'm going to assume is the Ursula character that is out to get her because she has this magical ability that whoever she kisses dies. And she's done it once in her life, and so she's like, I'm never going to do that again because I don't want to kill anybody. And so she's been on the run. And so she saves this guy, Dorian, from an assassin attempt. Now, she didn't know it was an assassin attempt, but she was basically in a boat that caught fire and she saves him and she wasn't supposed to save him and so she's basically been charged with killing him so she enters this beauty pageant not beauty pageant this kind of like bachelorette pageant because he is illegally in this world of Faroe, which is where all these books take place and it's basically like fey and human live side by side but you in order to stay or gain citizenship in this world um, unless you have been given citizenship for a specific reason, you have to marry someone who is part fae or full fae. And so he has this, you know, kind of competition where he's trying to find a wife so that he can stay in this town. And he's actually comes from like this family who killed a bunch of like the Selkies, which is her family. Um, and so he's not a great guy, but like there's a lot of suspicion around this because like he was never brought it was his dad who was the bad guy and so like he was never actually nothing was actually brought up against him because he was like 10 when this happened but like he was in situations that make it look bad so i'm sure there's more to the story than that and we're going to learn that throughout this book but like she has basically been charged with going in part of this contest and kissing him so that he dies and in doing so she'll get her life because she's been on the run the whole time and so like there's definitely like like i said there's there's a big bomb that was just dropped as far as like this queen and this evil like Ursula character and the relationship that this character has with our main character. So I'm definitely interested in the story. I'm just like, 
I don't know what it is. It's just the, this is not a series that you binge is what I'm thinking. So I'm afraid for what's going to happen, but I'll probably come back to you. I know I haven't read very far, but I'll probably come back to you when I have finished this book. And I'm just afraid that this book series is just going to have the same reaction to every single book I read, which is I enjoyed it. It was fun, but like there's not a lot of substance to it, which is fine. And I do like books like that, but not to binge to put in between other books that are maybe more harder hitting or our big fantasies or things that I just kind of need like a palate cleanser between. So I'm nervous for how this is going to go, but I am excited. And like, I'm now kind of, I'm not quite invested in them yet because they haven't really had any moments yet, but I am invested in her as a character and I'm interested to see where we go from here. So I have hope, but I'm nervous, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Hello. Um, I am here to tell you some thoughts now that I have some thoughts to tell you. Um, very descriptive over here. So I have a finished Kiss of a Selkie, and I gave this one four and a half stars. Based on my last, you know, update with you guys, I was very nervous about how this video was going and how my reading of the series was going to go. And then I read this one, and it was great. So I have bumped the rating for Heart of a Raven Prince down to three stars or three and a half stars because I think it was just that one book that just wasn't really sitting right with me because this one got four and a half stars and I could not put it down. I fell in love with these characters. I thought they were so, so cute. I loved seeing Maisie and Dorian and their relationship of sorts. It was one of those kind of things where they both didn't want it but they couldn't stay away kind of situations and just the chemistry that was between them was fantastic. So a lot of the same thoughts as far as like general, like this wrapped up really quickly. They both said I love you really fast. Like all of the same things that I thought when I was talking about the Raven Prince, those are still true with this book. And I think that's just the way that Tessonia Adet has like her writing style, especially with these kind of one and done standalone stories. So those are th those thoughts are going to stay the same with most of these books. But the chemistry, phenomenal. I loved the the story and this book made me cry. I'm not gonna lie. Like there's some stuff that happens at the end of this book that made me cry. I feel like that's saying something, you know? So I really enjoyed these two a lot. Um, and I don't really know how to explain why it worked, but there's a lot of stuff that worked. It was different because you, I think it was just like the setting and the situations that these characters got in that made their relationship more fun to read about than like the one from Heart of Raven Prince. I mean that one was really fun. You do see hints of them in this. They showed up in the epilogue of the story which that was really fun to see and I just really enjoyed a lot about this book because this book takes place a year after the events of the Heart of the Raven Prince. So there is a little bit of time um, but just seeing Maisie figuring stuff out and trying to be a good person and grappling with the fact that she really doesn't want to kill anybody but like is kind of forced to. It's it's basically like kill somebody or be killed situation and that is really tough for her because at first she's like this is fine I'm not gonna you know as you would expect in a situation like I'm not gonna have any emotions it's gonna be fine and then she can't get herself to do it and then she starts to fall for him so of course she really can't get herself to do it. So um this one's my favorite in the series so far but I think that's going to change because I have started Taste of Poison, um, A Taste of Poison. I am 80 pages in. I'm less than 100 pages in. I think I'm like 20% of the way through the book and I already love them the most. So I think it's the situations that our characters are in. As this jumps in to forced proximity right away, whereas the others you kind of like you have them separate like in their stories and then you kind of bring them together and there's not really a forced proximity situation if you will whereas this one they are literally handcuffed to each other in chapter three and are forced to kind of like deal with that so this is gonna be great I just have this feeling so this one follows our main characters um who we actually have met so in this book I think I forgot to tell you this but in this book um the huntsman character which is the the male guy from this one shows at the very very end and then we also one of the other contestants in this you know beauty I always want to call it a beauty pageant in the bachelorette pageant of 
sorts is the Sleeping Beauty Briny Rose character and the next book is going to be, which we do have a cover for now, um, is going to be following her story. So we have hints to the other two books after this one which I think is really fun and like you don't need that to enjoy the other books but it's really fun to have that. So with that being said we have Astrid who is the Snow White character and she was found in the same room as her father and her father was poisoned and her stepmother despises her and so is convinced that she is the one who killed her father and Astrid is like it was not me but she knows that her stepmother is not never going to believe her because Astrid has this magical ability she is what's called a mirror and that basically means that depending on her mood whether it's a good mood or a bad mood when you look at her your qual favorite qualities about yourself if she's in a good mood or your worst quali qualities about yourself if she's in a bad mood um, are going to be reflected on her and so your opinion of her is set in stone and no one's opinion of her has ever been changed and the only person who's ever seen her for what she actually is is her father and so she has this issue and is very forgettable so you've got the huntsman who is a bear shifter and so he is full fae and she is half fae. And so he has the ability to shift into his bear form and in doing so has a very keen sense of smell and is able to track her down. He's the only person who's ever been able to do that because she is so forgettable. People cannot remember her face. They only remember what color her eyes are because her eyes always match the person she's looking at. Her eyes are not actually, her eyes are like gray, I think. Um, but everybody who looks at her sees their color eyes. And so she is very forgettable and a lot of people cannot bring up physical features that work and so he's figured that out and so he follows her sense of smell and is kind of figuring things out about her and she's convinced on proving to him that she did not kill her father even though everyone thinks that she has and so she has kind of been hiding for a few months and the huntsman was hired by her stepmother um he's created a binding contract which has been a thing in these books that are causing lots of issues but created a binding contract where he I think has a lot of gambling debt and so has had some issues and has been working for what's called the Alpha Council which is basically the council of all the rulers in this realm all the kings and queens and has been working as like the finder of people and things for them and so her mother or stepmother is on this council and basically hires him to bring back her heart and she will have all of his debts forgiven and he's basically free. And so where we are now, they've met, they've, you know, basically been stuck together um, via some handcuffs and they have now lost said key. And so he is needing to bring her to uh, the stepmother. And so we're going to probably have a journey of sorts where they're going to be obviously forced, forced proximity because they're literally chained to each other and can't get away. Um, but there's just something about the two of them. His the whole hate to love, I'm assuming it's going to be hate to love, the whole like super gruff exterior kind of thing. I don't know what it is, but there's something about this chemistry that started right away. And a lot of the other places, it, it didn't feel as realistic to me. So this one is going to be probably, unless, if it continues the way that I think it's going to continue, this is going to be my favorite. So, um, I think I'm going to be very obsessed with this because I was able to sit down and read like that good chunk of the of, of it uh, without like relatively quickly. So I think I'm going to end up finishing this book in the next couple of days. So I just wanted to come tell you my initial thoughts before I got really into it because I have a feeling that I'm going to get sucked into it and then just forget to come update you and then I'll update you when it's done. So that's kind of how I felt with Kiss of the Soapy because I feel like I was pretty close, maybe a little bit farther than this when I came to update you last about it and it just blew my mind so I think I had a not great experience with Heart of the Raven Prince I don't know if I just built it up too much in my head because that one it was like it was good but I've fallen in love with both these and been able to get to them with through them very very quickly and that one took me a long time to dive into so I still stand by my comment of these are not bingeable books and I wish I, these are probably better books to space out, but I don't know when I'm going to ever do that. So having a video like this is really helpful for me as far as getting through the things that I need to get through. So I am loving this one, I guess, is the moral of my story is 
both of these books have been really good and I'm barely into this one so I cannot I can't wait to see where we're gonna go from here because it's already like crazy action-packed and these books have a, a they basically have been we're gonna get into the story but not a lot's gonna happen whereas this one it feels like a lot has happened and we're barely into the story and I'm just very excited to see where we're gonna go from here so significantly more uplifting than the last time I left you but I still stand by a lot of those feelings of how I feel about the series so I'm very interested to see the rest of this book and where we're going to go from here because I have very high hopes for it and I think it's going to be very very good. Hello I am here to give you final thoughts and to wrap up this video because I literally minutes ago finished A Taste of Poison. Um, this one's going to get another four and a half from me honestly like this is my favorite one in this series. It outshines the rest of them by a lot. It's not quite a five star. There's just something about it that's not letting me give it a five star, but like it's cl it's very close to like five star quality. So this is just like the series just got better as we continued in this video. So all of those scared thoughts I had early on, um, they went away. So this one, like I said, was my favorite by far. I loved everything about this. Um, the thoughts I had when I came to last, just starting out, they just kind of tripled and kept going. Um, the whole like forced proximity, the whole, they kept being like forcibly handcuffed to each other so they couldn't be taken, like they had to be around each other all the time. Um, one bedrope was included and in this, you've got the hate to love, they kind of like create a bargain um, where he starts to believe that she is innocent of the crime that she has been accused of and starts to like dive a little bit more into this. I love seeing the little hints to the Snow White. You've got the whole like stepmother who was out to get her. You've got the whole like one of the bargains. I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the last clip that I did but one of the bargains is that like she requires the Huntsman to bring her heart, Snow White's heart, or sorry Astrid Snow's heart and you've got that aspect of it. There's also some deeper topics in this that I wasn't expecting. So I would say trigger warnings for just general grief, but also a drug abuse, because there is this, as you can probably see, there's like a vial of poison here. Um, there is this type of apple that is basically poisonous to humans and semi-poisonous to fey or half fey. It's supposed to help with like if a fae gets hurt, because fae um, heal really quickly and half fae heal quicker than humans, but they're like in that weird in between. So it's supposed to help when fae get hurt really, really badly. And it's basically just something the doctor gives the patient if they are like struggling with pain. And it's kind of like a pain tolerance sort of thing. And Astrid was in a horse accident when she was really, really young. Not really, really young, but when she was younger and basically got trampled by a horse and in doing so was very badly hurt and so the doctor gave her this type of poison and she has become addicted to it and has used it basically to like dim down her emotions because of her mirroring kind of power that she has. She uses it to basically make herself always in a good mood so that when she comes across people they always have they always see her in a positive light. And our main character the Huntsman has some history with watching someone he loved kind of be addicted to this as well. So he's watching her do that. So you've got that whole like drug abuse situation. We definitely have her in withdrawal a couple of times. So just if any of that is triggering to you, even though it's set in like a very different historical, uh, fantastical setting, it's still very much present on the page. So just wanted to let everyone know about that. But because of that, we get a much deeper like look into Astrid as a character. We get a much deeper look into the Huntsman as a character as well. So you get both of them and they're, there's just so much more to them and like their romance is just like the other two. It does happen very, very quickly, but it's more believable because there's all these other layers to it and you really get to see Astrid and him solving a murder. Um, so you have a murder mystery element to it as well. And so you've got that, but then you also have them kind of working together and growing like attraction towards one another. And when Astrid is finally like free of this poison stuff, you really get to see her 
become her own and take matters into her own hands with a couple of things and like her emotions and stuff like that. And there's just a lot about this relationship that feels perfect and feels like they're really supportive of one another. And I mean, you have all of the tropes that you expect with like kind of, kind of like a happily ever after story, but at the same time, there's so much more to them as characters and I loved them. These were my favorite couple in the whole thing and we did get to see a hint of Maisie from Kiss of a Selkie show up in the epilogue so that was really fun. Um, so I'm very excited about the next one to see where it goes when it comes out later this year. But I did it! I finished this series and I am like, very very happy. So I think starting with this one even though that one was next kind of I was very worried about the rest of it because like I still have fond memories of this. I don't know why this one just didn't work so well but having this one bumped down to three and a half. I think what it is, it's going to be three and a half, four, and then four and a half, I think is how I'm going to say is my official rating of these because I enjoyed a lot of these. It's honestly making me want to reread the first one and just to see if, you know, my opinions would change on that one because I remember really enjoying it. But um, I need a break from these books. I need something else because I am... Um, I just, I don't know. These were very good, but it's just repetitive back to back. So maybe I won't do a standalone series like this again, but we shall see. But I very much enjoyed this. And even though the first, it like, I started out a little rough with the first one, it ended so well and it just kept going. And it reminds me how much I enjoy this author's writing and the world that she creates. Because even though these are all set um, independently, there are things that she's adding for people like me who are binging the entire, maybe not binging, but reading the entire series, is you get layers of this world added on. But even if you are just reading one and not reading all of them, there are still aspects to this world that she has to kind of keep repeating herself uh, for people who haven't read the other books. So there are there is some repetitiveness when it comes to the world building, but there's not a lot. It's really just like, here's a thing. Oh, also, here's a fun new fact about the world that's going to make sense for this story. And if you're someone who's binging all of them, then it'll add to the experience. But if you're not, it won't take away. So like, she just has a very good way of writing them. But I had a good time. The moral of the story, it started out rough, but it ended very, very well. I'm realizing that you, there we go. Now they're the right. It started out rough, but it ended very, very well. Taste of Poison is one of my new favorites. Um, I very much enjoyed this series. I'm glad that I finally have read them because I have had these on my shelves for quite a while. And especially with her adding more to this series at some point, I was very worried about it. But it, this feels very complete. Like I feel very satisfied that I finally have read all of these books. So I hope that you enjoyed my very first episode of the Simplify My series. If there is a series that you would like me to do, please let me know down below. I'll link as well as put down um, my most recent series kind of wrap up where I go through all the series that I'm currently reading. And you can kind of go through that if you haven't already to know what series I have started. But please let me know of a series that you would love me to do one of these episodes on because I have so many to choose from that I need help kind of narrowing it down. So if you have some ideas and would like to see something specifically, please let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this new experiment on my channel. I hope that you will enjoy seeing more things um, in this vein, but please let me know what your thoughts are if you've read these books or um, if you are a fan of Tessonia Odette, because she's got quite a lot of books out there. So if there's ones that are like you, some of your favorites, let me know. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you'd like to be part of this awesome growing family. I also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links. So make sure to check all that out and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!